The University of Leeds has a designated Romani collection and in displaying all of those materials there's a temptation to display all the romantic elements of gypsy life, the beautiful watercolours that depict colourful vados or caravans. But we recognised that there are real communities to whom these images relate and these are communities who have long had to fight for basic human rights in this country. And in co-curating this exhibition with Amanda Reeve, uh, who runs the Gypsyville Heritage Group and members of Leeds Gypsy and Traveller Exchange, we recognise that it's really important to demonstrate the fight for rights that Romani communities have had and still have in this country. A core element of the exhibition was to demonstrate a lot of the representations that have romanticised gypsy life and culture historically and well into the mid 20th century. One example are the Press Association photographs and obviously these would have appeared in newspapers because a broad readership was interested in gypsy life. And these particular photographs were selected uh, by people working with Leeds Gypsy and Traveller Exchange to consider what they thought most represented gypsy culture and historical gypsy life as they understood it. And you can imagine that there would be readers of newspapers would be really interested in a photograph of gypsy women hanging their washing on a tree in the sunshine. So you get a very romanticised image of gypsy life there. However, we also have photographs of a landowner in Gloucestershire having to explain to a group of gypsies who are camping on her land that she will be prosecuted if they don't move on. And we have another photograph of a young boy sitting in front of a fire and a meal being cooked over the fire with a recognition and the interpretation that members of the gypsy community gave us in terms of these photos that quite often gypsy families were moved on from where they were staying at the most inconvenient times. If you were cooking a meal over a fire and the police arrived and told you you had to move on, you know, you're going to have to put the fire out, you're going to have to start it again somewhere else, your meal's half cooked. So as well as demonstrating the romance of representations of gypsy life, there's also the piercing reality of what life was like for these communities, especially travelling gypsies in the mid 20th century. A man who spent a lot of time depicting gypsy life was Fred Lawson, who produced sketches and watercolours. And they were to go with publications, poems, fictional representations, and some of them appeared in newspapers as well. He's very well known in Yorkshire, but also further afield. And in his images of gypsy life, he, it's really a celebration of gypsy life, particularly a travelling life. And we see representations of groups travelling to the horse fairs, in particular, Brough Hill and Appleby Horse Fair in Cumbria. And they're very colourful, some of these images. And we could consider these romanticised images because although they're a celebration of the reality of a travelling gypsy life in the 20th century, we don't see the hardness of that life. Travelling gypsies in the 20th century and into the 21st century have suffered prejudice and persecution. But it's interesting to think about how long they've actually experienced that sort of persecution. And we've been able to represent the long history of anti-gypsyism in Britain, in particular in England, in this exhibition. Some of the documents that we've got include a statute from King Henry VIII with his 1530 Egyptians Act. And that act is directed towards outlandish people calling themselves Egyptians. Outlandish, in this case, actually refers to people who've come from another land. So this legislation is actually depicting Romani people in this period as foreigners, definitely as outsiders. The legislation itself tells gypsies that they must leave the realm or suffer death. This was a genocidal policy. And we see this in legislation throughout Henry's reign and Elizabeth I's. Despite the separation of several centuries, we can see in the mid 20th century the sort of prejudice that excluded gypsies and travellers from pubs, from shops, uh, from jobs and from other accommodation. And we might like to think that the world gets progressively better in terms of human rights, that we become more liberal and more open. However, 
signs like this suggest that things have not moved on very far in terms of attitudes from this 16th century persecution. While there has been an overwhelming amount of prejudice against gypsy communities, not everybody who isn't a gypsy has felt that way. And there have importantly been some figures, gorgeous figures, that means non-gypsy figures, who have played a part in the Romani-led struggle for fundamental human rights for gypsy and traveller communities in this country. Those include people like Grattan Puxen, who worked with the Gypsy Council lobbying for rights within Britain and in Europe. One of the most famous in Yorkshire of those campaigners for Romani rights was Dorothy Una Ratcliffe. She married Lord Brotherton's nephew and actually was Lord Brotherton's Lady Mayoress when he was Lord Mayor of Leeds. Part of her campaigning is represented here with a letter to the National Council for Civil Liberties asking about the closing of Bruff Hill Fair during the Second World War because the police suggested that Bruff Hill Fair had to be closed because of the fires and that they might attract Nazi bombers. But Dorothy Una Ratcliffe suggested that this was such an important part of gypsy culture that relatively this posed little risk and that the fair should continue. She wasn't actually born in Yorkshire, but she was an adopted Dales woman. And crucially, she understood gypsy culture as an important part of Dales' life. She did not see this as a community apart. And while some of her representations of gypsy life are rather romantic, I think she was rather important in seeing gypsy culture as integral to Yorkshire. This was not something that comes from the outside. This is a community that is part of Yorkshire life. Many of the representations in this exhibition are made by people from outside the gypsy community. And if we are ever to move past the kind of stereotypes that we've seen more recently in My Big Fat Gypsy Weddings and in tabloid headlines, then there needs to be far more space and opportunity for representations of the Romani community and Romani culture that come from Romani filmmakers, Romani writers, Romani producers and Romani actors. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.